The last time you went to a land sale, did you get a soil test from the auctioneer? And did that auctioneer say, oh yeah, this ground is really good. I think you need to spend a lot of money on it. The soil's really built up. Has that ever happened to you? Should it happen to you? Well, you know what? Having your soil test information ahead of purchasing some land can always help you out. In my case, it could help me save a little bit of money <laughs> by knowing that a field has a history where fertility is let's say just a little bit limited, that helped me get a little bit better deal on some okay. ground this year. All right, so what we're talking about here is Darren bought some ground this last fall, and we just wanna show you how this ground had gotten kind of depleted and how literally it was worth less than normal market value because we knew some of this kind of information. Now, it's very easy if you go to a program like, let's say, Google Earth or something, you can zoom right down in on just about any field in the country. You can see what it looks like, and you can see on Darren's field, there's a lot of erosion going on there. And so it's no surprise when you take a look at his soil test that the organic matter level is pretty low. All oh. right, hold on, hold on now. Let's just say this. You're looking at the worst part in my whole field. Not saying that the rest of this field is that much better, <laughs> but this is the worst part yes, of this but there particular are quite a few, field. There are quite a few acres that really aren't a whole lot different than this, and we'll just use, I'm not saying that it's all this terrible or anything else, but the point is we just want you to understand a little bit why a soil test should be used when you're trying to buy some ground. Because, for example, with Darren's ground here and the test that I've got in front of me, it says organic matter, 1.5%. Okay, well, if let's say I had a soil that had 6.5% organic matter, that'd be 5% more. Well, literally that soil with 5% more organic matter could hold about 20% more water. It would also give us free release of many more pounds of nitrogen, phosphorus, and sulfur every single year. We would gain many dollars, tens of dollars, in nitrogen, phosphorus, and sulfur every single year if I had those organic matter levels higher in the soil. Are you trying to get me depressed here, Brian? Are you trying to make me feel bad about this? You know, I, I'm just saying this is one of the reasons why that ground is less, it's worth less than if the organic matter level was higher. All right, well, you're gonna hear a lot more about this particular field over the next few years because really I took this land on as a chance to try and build it back up. The previous landowner, that's why he wanted to sell it to me too. He said, you know what? I know this ground's gotten run down. It's been cash rented maybe for 25 years. And whenever it's cash rented, you know guys aren't able to throw out lots of extra nutrients that they aren't gonna use up this year because they may not get that ground back again next year. So what happened is the soil got depleted over the years and now it's a chance to build it back up. So I'm really looking forward to the challenge, building organic matter levels, building some fertility levels, but okay. also pulling some great yields off this field <laughs> in not too long. <laughs> All right, well, let's talk about that just a little bit more and look at some of the other challenges that Darren has in this particular field. The first thing we always look at on a soil test is soil pH. His pH is 8.4 4 in this particular spot, and it's basically because all the topsoil is gone. So we've got to work on building more topsoil over time or building any topsoil. So we're going to use a little bit of manure here and there. We're going to use high residue crops like corn and wheat and reduce the amount of tillage. Over time, we can get that improved. Well, this is the big thing, and we see it on a lot of the hillier ground in our part of the country. Back, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago, really all guys had was tillage. That was it. They didn't have all the herbicides that we've got today. You know, until the last 20 years or so, we've had some decent choices. But guys were forced to do tillage in areas where they probably shouldn't have. And that resulted in some soil erosion. There are actually some terraces that were put in on this particular farm, but they were put in way too late. Yeah, but and a terrace doesn't solve the problem of soil erosion. You it, have to reduce your tillage when you have highly erodible land. It doesn't stop it on the hillsides, but at least it catches some of that soil in the field. <laughs> Unfortunately, Still. yeah, a lot of my topsoil ran right out of my field and down uh, into the next few fields. Okay, let's look at some of the other information. All right, the next thing we always look at on a soil test is base saturation. Most of the base saturation numbers that Darren has are good except for potassium. We want it in the 4 to 8% range to maximize potassium uptake into the plant. Well, here's the thing. We aren't making a recommendation by saying we need to get to 4% of, oh, that automatically means so many pounds. It's going to vary depending on your soil and what your soil has for, well, yeah, but say, it's not that say tough parts to per million of calcium and right. magnesium. Right, it's not that tough to things. figure out. We just want to have that ratio right so we can look at how many pounds there actually are of calcium, magnesium, hydrogen, sodium on out there and we can figure out how many pounds of potassium we need. We need quite a few pounds of potassium. Well, we're definitely going to need some potassium. And you know, this is the other thing. In our part of the country, 
Our soils are pretty rich in potassium. As far as parts per million, they're pretty high normally. But again, this ground has been been mined over the last 25 years in cash rent. And because of all that erosion out there, the organic matter level has really dropped. So our cation exchange capacity here is only 14.5, meaning we can only hold about 145 pounds of nitrogen in one application. That's not nearly enough for 200 or 250 bushel corn. So that's another reason why we want to build that organic matter. Well, level. When we look at cation exchange capacity, organic matter is one of the three components, along with the type of clay and the amount of clay we have in our soil. That all goes together to show the holding capacity of the soil for water and for nutrients, primarily in our discussion today. And we definitely need to hold more water and more nutrients in dry land farming in South Dakota if we're going to be successful. So over the next 10, 20 years, we're going to build those things up. That's the challenge. We've got an opportunity to do some different things, to try to do the right things for that ground, and we're definitely going to leave it in better shape than when I got it. So yeah, I think it's a good deal. I think it's good for the environment. I think it's going to be good for our farm, and we're definitely going to learn some things. Well, another thing that Darren's going to try really hard on to make sure he does a great job out there is weed control, because I know we've got a few of our Weed of the Week out there, and I think Darren's going to stop, and we'll tell you how he'll do it coming up later in the show.